In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the staircase. Here, I shall discuss some of the basic things we must know before the design. Staircase is an important component of a building which provides access to different floors of a building. So it is very common building element which we observe in any types of buildings or civil structures. It consists of number of steps arranged in such a way that a person can move from one level to another level. So basically it helps the person in climbing from one floor to the other floor. Based on the geometrical shape of the staircases, they are classified into different types. The first type is the straight flight stairs. See, this is a very straight stair. It helps in climbing from one floor to the other floor. Next one is straight two flight stair with half landing. See, this is one flight, this is another flight. And this is intermediate landing between the two flights. This is also a one type of straight stair. Then this is quarter turn stair with landing. So this is the intermediate landing for the stair. And the next one is quarter turn stair with winder. This, is, this portion is the winders. Next one is dog leg stair with half landing. So this one is the most commonly used type of staircase in buildings which we will design in our later lectures. And the next one is open wheel stair with two quarter landing. The next one is spiral staircase. This type of staircase you will, uh, you will see in different movies. These are basically used a uh, indoor purpose to make the buildings aesthetically very beautiful. So before uh, go, going into depth, we have to understand some terms which are commonly used in case of staircase. The first term is the flight. So what is flight? Flight is the length of the staircase between two landings. It is the sloping and uh, sloping and portion of the stairs. So it is misly written. So means sloping portion of the stairs. See, I have this. This is one floor. That is the other floor. So I shall. I I will climb from number for floor number one to this landing portion. Then again, this intermediate landing, I will climb to the floor number two. So this portion is called one flight and that is another flight for the staircase. Next landing. Landing is the intermediate horizontal portion provided in case of a staircase. It is provided for relaxing while climbing a staircase. See, I shall climb from floor number one to this intermediate landing. So this portion of the uh, this portion of the uh, staircase is called landing, where a person will uh, 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 rest for may take rest for some time and then again climb to the next floor level. This part is called the landing, where he can relax. Next, the rise. The vertical height of a step is called rise or riser. See, staircase consists of this type of steps, isn't it? This called this part is called rise or riser. Rise or riser. Tread the horizontal distance between two risers. On a step is called a tread. This post, this horizontal dim dimension is called a tread. Next, headroom. It is the clear height available between 
one flight and other and other above it see this is one flight this is one flight and suppose this is the intermediate landing so above the intermediate landing i must have some height clear height so then so that a person can easily rest over the landing slab or <clears throat> when i carry some items over the uh, step uh, over the uh, stairs from one floor to the other floor i can comfortably bring that item when it is it has some uh, great height so this this height is very necessary this height is called the headroom this is the clear space available above the landing or above the steps next the waist slab the slab on which the step of a staircase are made is called is known as the waist slab see and this is the one flight to so over the flight i have these steps i have one inclined slab over which these steps are made so this slab is called the waist slab next the soffit it is the bottom most surface of the waist slab so see in the picture i have shown one waist slab and this bottom most portion of the waist slab is called the soffit these are all about the terminologies which are very commonly used with the staircase so next one is some general rules we must have to follow when proportioning a staircase so a staircase is proportioned on the basis of the space available and also some of the general rules mentioned below the general rules are two times of riser plus tread should be in between 600 mm to 640 mm similarly the riser into tread should be equal to 40000 to 42000 mm square next the riser is kept 150 mm to 180 mm for residential building and 120 mm to 150 mm for public buildings so this type of things we have to remember when i proportion a the staircase of a building then tread is kept in between 200 to 250 for residential type building and 230 to 300 for public buildings next the width of a private staircase is about 900 mm and that of public staircase is kept 1800 mm to 2400 mm see this is our one flight so these are the steps over the flight so this is the width of the stairs this is the width of the stairs so this width should be in between the got 1800 to 2400 for public buildings and for private stairs it is within 1 meter there should be at least 2 meter headroom measured vertically above any steps so as i already explained what is headroom this is the clear space available above the steps or landing so this should be minimum 2 meter the angle of flight with the horizontal should be between 25 degree to 40 degree the angle of flight means this is one flight and this should be the angle theta so it should be in between 25 degree to 40 degree the number of steps in each flight should not be greater than 12 as i already told so in our buildings we design the staircase in dog leg type means we we have a flight suppose this is one floor we by this first flight we reach the intermediate landing then again we climb the another flight so after climbing this first flight we take some rest we may take some rest in the intermediate landing so that our journey becomes comfortable so 
for a single flight we should not have more than 12th number of steps for free flow of users the width of landing should be equal to width of stairs so the width of landing always should be equal to the width of stairs so that uh, the flow become very free 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 flow of the traffic is available next the structural behavior of a staircase means uh, uh, in how the staircase behave structurally structurally a staircase slab behave like an ordinary slab supported on the walls or beams the the staircase slab are classified into two types based on the direction in which it span staircase slab means it is basically the waist slab see it is the flight so we have one waist slab over which the steps are placed so this this slab is the staircase slab so the staircase slab have two types based on structural classification the one is stair slab spanning horizontally the other is stair slab spanning longitudinally okay so we'll try to understand what is stair slab spanning horizontally see the stair slab supported on both sides over the walls or beams okay the beams may be walls or beams stringer beam on one side and a beam or a wall on the other side is called as stair slab spanning horizontally means i have some steps i have some one flight i have uh, drawn one plan of the staircase so in one side the stair uh the flight is supported by one wall and in the other side it is supported by one wall wall or a beam okay B see here in these pictures it is on one side is supported by wall and the other side is supported by one beam the beam is continuous just below the slab along the flight this beam is called a stringer beam it is also a beam but it is called a stringer beam which is placed just below the waist slab and it it is continuously provided along the flight of the staircase so when the staircase is supported on the both the sides one side wall the other side is wall or beam then this type of staircase is called the stair slab spanning horizontally the effective span l of this type of stair slab is taken as the horizontal distance between center to center of support see the small l it is shown it is the distance between the center of the support that is the center of the wall to the center of the stringer beam okay that is it is imagine that the slab, the stair slab or the waist slab bend in this way means along the steps and its effective length is also taken as along the steps of the along the steps of the staircase and this is the cross section next stair slab spanning longitudinally the stair slab supported at bottom and the top of the flight is called the stair slab spanning longitudinally so in the figure one uh, typical uh, uh, longitudinally span uh, staircase is shown see this is one landing this is one flight this is again one landing and this staircase is supported to at the top and this is supported in the bottom and it is a longitudinal section of the staircase okay it is longitudinal section of the staircase once the staircase is supported at the top means uh, uh, one uh, one level 
and it is supported at the bottom in the other level okay so definitely it will spend longitudinally means it will spend it is imagine that it is uh, it is spent along a longitudinal direction the previous one was the span of the staircase was in the horizontal direction here the span of the staircase is along the longitudinal direction so the most commonly used uh, uh, type of staircase which is dog legged or open well or quarter turn quarter turn all are belongs to the stair slab longitudinally now comes to the loads on the staircase so when we go for the design of the staircase so we have to consider some loadings what type of loads commonly act on the staircase the first one is the live load as per is 875 part 2 1987 Live loads are coming on the stairs, which may be taken as follows: stairs liable for uh, liable for overcrowding, which is taken as five kilonewton per meter square. Overcrowding means the buildings uh, which are used for public, suppose hospital, suppose institution, school building. So this type of of the buildings where overcrowding arises. As it is a public building, so for those cases we take five kilonewton per meter square. Then stairs not liable for overcrowding is taken as three kilonewton per meter square. Means for our common buildings or our uh, private buildings we consider it as three kilonewton per meter square. Then going to dead load, dead loads are to be calculated per unit. Per unit horizontal area, the dead load of stairs consists of dead weight of the steps and dead weight of the waist slab. So there will be one space per unit. Okay. See the when we talk about the dead load, we have this one flight, and along the flight I have a waist slab. Over the waist slab I have steps. Okay. So when we talk about the Uh, dead weight of the stairs. Basically, I have to calculate the th uh, the weight coming to the waist slab. Sorry, uh, so, sorry. Uh, the self weight of the waist slab and the self weight of these steps. Okay. So these are all about the basic things we have covered in this video, so that we can. understand the basic things regarding the staircase so in the next video we will start the design part of the rcc stair so if you like the video please share and subscribe thank you for watching thank you